the power dissipation of a resistive element is defined as the product of the current through the load and the voltage across it. That is the applied voltage squared divided by the load resistance, or the current through the load squared multiplied by the resistance of the load. For a DC circuit, the voltage and current are independent of frequency and so is the magnitude of the power. For DC circuits, the power is constant. For an AC circuit however, the power dissipation continuously changes with time. For these circuits, a more appropriate way to quantify the power is its average value. The average power is the RMS value of the applied voltage multiplied by the resistance of the load. RMS stands for root mean square, and mathematically is formulated as the square root of the summation of the squared values of a variable divided by the number of data points. That is the square root of the arithmetic mean of the set. A DC voltage that generates this amount of power is simply the square root of this average. Therefore it results in an identical heat in a resistive element, or the same amount of brightness in an illuminated component such as a light bulb. There are different methods to derive the RMS value of an AC signal such as a sine wave. One way is graphically. Let's consider a sine wave with an amplitude of VP. The instantaneous power generated by the sine wave across a 1 ohm load is the sine wave squared. Looking at the graph, it is evident that the power signal is always positive and symmetric around the middle horizontal value. This value is the average power dissipated through the load. An equivalent DC voltage that generates the same power is the square root of this average. Therefore, the RMS value of the sine wave is the square root of this value, which is VP divided by the square root of 2. This technique can be used to find the RMS values of other periodical signals. Mathematically, the RMS formula describes the equation to find the RMS value of n distinct quantities. For a function continuously defined over the period between T1 and T2, the formula changes to its integral form. Applying trigonometric identities and simplifying the equation, results in the same RMS value for the sine wave as in the previous step. This analysis can be applied to other continuous functions. We can also use approximation to find the RMS value of the sine wave. Note that the two half cycles of the sine wave generate the same amount of power, making the analysis simpler. Sampling n equally spaced points of the function and applying the RMS discrete equation provides a rough estimate of the RMS value. The accuracy of this method can be enhanced by increasing the number of samples. This method can be used for discrete and random signals. The RMS values of other AC signals can be derived in a similar manner. This table tabulates the RMS values of a few typical signals. The RMS value of a composite waveform made of other signals, is not the sum of their individual RMS values. It is the square root of the summation of the RMS value of each component of the waveform squared. Note that the RMS value of each signal is independent of its signal frequency. When measuring electrical outlets in the US, we observe a sine wave with a peak-to-peak -peak value of 340 volts, corresponding to 120 volts RMS. In countries with 230 volts outlets we measure a 650 volts peak-to-peak -peak sine wave. Note that these lines are never referred to by their peak-to-peak -peak or the peak values since what really is important is the amount of delivered power. Calculating the RMS values of some signals can be tedious. Some instruments like this analog arts oscilloscope, are equipped with features that provide the RMS value and other signal parameters. The RMS value does not provide any information about the nature of the signal. However, it offers a meaningful idea about the strength of the waveform. Thank you for watching.